most of my adult life since I have become aware of the notion of conspiracies and delved into it a little bit, at least in the general sense, I grasped on to the belief that conspiracies can't really be so, or they at least fall apart from the get-go, because you can't even get two people to keep a secret between themselves, let alone some vast network of secrecy. People just don't keep secrets, so it would all be blabbed out. And I bought into that for many years. And as time goes on, I see all these things through observation that are just, they're true. And yet, the public perception, the mass popular perception is the opposite of the truth. And it challenged my thought on that. And I just look at it more and more because one who came from religion, as one who came from religion, my wife and I as two who came from religion, there's, there's quite the conspiracy going on there if you believe like we do, which is all our sins are forgiven. There is not one sin between us and our God, and yet 99.99999% might be a slight exaggeration, but pretty much of all religion, all Christendom teaches that your God holds your sins against you and that you must live your life going about the work of correcting that, fixing that, resolving that. You must fix the issue of the sin that is between you and your God, the sin that is in your life. I mean, that sounds conspiratorial. Why would they do that? How could they do that? And how could they keep such a... Well, it's it's no different than any other criminal enterprise. If I'm engaged in a criminal enterprise, it's not that the problem is that I'm going to blab and give away the secret. That's not the problem. <laughs> the, because I am... I am invested in that secret. I'm invested in that secret not coming out because if I blab it, it then hurts me. I can talk to my fellow conspirators and that's fine because we all have the same investment and betraying you is betraying me because we all have the same thing going on here. So it's a self-motivation. It doesn't go against our nature to keep that secret. It goes perfectly in line with our nature to keep the conspiracy and if you are truly fooled because obviously not everyone in the lie knows it's a lie sometimes the majority of the people don't know it's a lie i would put to you not only religion but communism they called them useful idiots and a lot of times they were destroyed as soon as the communists took power because the the useful idiots were idealistic and once they saw the truth of what they believed in or put their faith in they were horrified and they'd have to kill all of them so it's a conspiracy but in an intuitive sense that's how these things work nasa and the government and so-called education which is which is backed up with the so-called entertainment industry which is really just an indoctrination industry it's there to brainwash you and to keep you in line with the powers that be. And I know that sounds conspiratorial to people. And there's maybe even within that whole framework, there's different forces going at each other. But still, they're going at each other for the right to have ownership over public opinion and over what people think and believe. So the struggle in the world, as well as the struggle in so-called Christendom, is that of power, which is power in numbers, which is the power to have everyone believe like you do. So that's why they're so focused on what they call growth. I'm talking about religion now. You get people in your building, you get people baptized or whatever ritual they come up with to get you to do something so that they can say, hey, our, our group is growing more than anyone else. But is that really what it's about? I mean, Paul was virtually alone. He could, he could list all his friends and associates by name, and he did. No one else did that in the Bible. It, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. 
So it's not about numbers. Sure, God wants people to believe in him, but not for the sake of ha having those numbers because he is the truth. God wants people to believe in the truth. And if people reject the truth, then so be it. But the focus has to be on that truth, not your numbers. Once the focus becomes on the numbers, well, then the truth can be sacrificed. The truth becomes secondary. It might even still be number two. If the truth is number two to numbers, well, that's all it takes. And you're going to compromise the truth all the time. Because number two might as well be number 1,000. Because the number one thing is fill those seats. Fill the pews. Get people in here. Our numbers are growing. And that proves the truth. See, that's where they get it backwards. The only thing that proves the truth is that Jesus said it. And that is not going to be to the satisfaction of any carnal person. Which... Again, 99.999999% of, of Christendom is, unfortunately. So, I like to put these videos out here, my wife and I do on occasion, to remind you that if you feel alone, it's for good reason. You are alone. And it's never going to change, because the truth was alone. He was alone at his crucifixion and that's the way it will ever be because he's been going for thousands of years to build a church, to build a body. And so I take that to mean that it's only a few souls here and there every year that, that come into the truth, that really believe in him. And the rest are involved in that, that conspiracy that is to our benefit, that is the individual's benefit for maintaining a lie that doesn't have to be kept up with some sort of network of, of hiding things because everyone's in agreement. They have their own motivation and they share it with everyone else. And that's what keeps it going and that's what makes it look real unless you actually seek the truth, which you must do, which takes courage. Well, I always say that you got to have courage. Just being right isn't enough. You have to have the courage of your convictions and believe in them, even when there is literally no one around you who believes or even cares about what you're saying. Conspiracy of one here, folks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. In Jesus' name, amen.